Just before we start, a quick shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. It's been the preeminent attack helicopter for the last 30 plus years, but is it still the top dog? Built to fight the Soviet Union and the hordes of Soviet tanks on the plains of Eastern Europe, which up until about a year ago seemed like an outdated idea, but with Ukraine it's very much back in focus. The Apache was first introduced in 1986, 37 years ago, and saw its first major combat in Operation Just Cause, the invasion of Panama in 1989, clocking up 240 combat hours, mostly at night, using its advanced FLIR night vision and the Hellfire air-to-ground anti-armor missiles. General Carl Steiner, the operation commander, said that you could fire that Hellfire missile through a window from 6.5 kilometers at night, which made it the first attack helicopter to go beyond the front line of its own troops. But time and tide wait for no man, and over those 37 years, many advances have been made. So how has the Apache fared? And is it still the most effective attack helicopter in the world? The story of the Apache goes back to 1972 when the Lockheed AH-56 Cheyenne was cancelled by the Army. I made a video about that a while back, so if you want to find out more about that later, there's a link up in the corner. The AH-56 Cheyenne was the first truly dedicated attack helicopter designed from the ground up with many advanced features that would later be seen in the Apache, rather than being a modified version of an existing design like the Bell Cobra, which was a development of the Bell UH-1 Iroquois or Huey. Back in 1948, the US came up with the Key West Agreement, which set out the division of air assets between the Army, Navy and the newly created Air Force, which still forms the basis of their use right up until today's military. This forbade the Army from having fixed-wing aircraft and limited them to having just helicopters. However, in 1971, with the development of the AH-56 Cheyenne behind schedule, there were tensions between the Army and the Air Force, with the Air Force seeing the AH-56 Cheyenne as duplicating part of their job for close air support. It was capable of doing the job of a fixed-wing attack aircraft, but with the advantages of a helicopter and the air aerial fire support system. However, the Air Force was determined to kill the project and applied maximum political pressure to do so. This would allow them to develop the A-10 Thunderbolt, or Warthog, and the Sea Harrier for the Marines. Other issues, such as the rate of development of digital systems, also went against the Cheyenne, which was mostly an analog electronic aircraft, and which was already outdated by the time of its cancellation in 1971. Although the Army had lost the battle for the AH-56 Cheyenne, they were still determined to have their own attack helicopter, and in August 1972 announced the Advanced Attack Helicopter Programme, to replace the Bell AH-1 Cobra. This would have greater range, firepower, maneuverability to fly low and use the terrain, hills and valleys or nap of the earth flying to hide from enemy radar. There were two main contenders, the Bell YAH-63 and the Hughes YAH-64. After trials in 1975, the Hughes YAH-64 was chosen as the winner because amongst other things, its four-bladed propeller was more damage tolerant, capable of taking a 23 caliber hit directly, and the tail dragger tricycle landing gear was thought to be more stable than the single front wheel tricycle gear, that of the Bell. The Army also didn't want to interrupt the supply of Bell Hueys, which were a mainstay of US Army aviation. Following the Army tradition of naming helicopters after Native American Indian tribes and chiefs, the YAH-64 became the AH-64A Apache, a heavy attack platform for close air support and armed escort for other aircraft. One of the main armaments the new helicopter would use was also in development from 1974 and was the laser-guided and later radar-guided Hellfire missile. Originally a tank buster, it is now a multi-mission, multi-target precision strike weapon. To give extra power and durability, the Apache had twin GE T700 turboshaft engines, initially giving just short of 1700 horsepower each and a top speed of 293 kilometers 
or 183 miles an hour. The body of the Apache was narrow with a pilot sitting behind and above the gunner. This narrow head-on profile presents a smaller, more difficult hit target than the wider two abreast helicopters like the Huey or Blackhawk. One of the biggest features was the helmet mounted display, the integrated helmet and display sighting system. This was linked to the high power optics mounted in the nose of the Apache and could be connected to either the pilot or the gunner's helmet to control the 30mm automatic M230 chain gun. So wherever the pilot or the gunner looked, the gun would follow. The stub wings had four hard points to carry a mixture of unguided 70mm Hydra missiles, Hellfire missiles and extra fuel tanks for extended range missions if required. The body had a titanium and Kevlar armour to protect not only the crew but also important systems like avionics, engines and gearboxes. The gearbox was also designed to run without oil for up to 30 minutes in case it was holed. The crew cabin has a bulletproof divider between the pilot and the gunner so if one is hit a ricocheting round inside the cabin won't take both of them out. This protection was given a real baptism of fire during the second Iraq war when a squadron was sent into Baghdad on March 23, 2003 to take on the Medina division of a Republican guard before the main attack began. Flying in at 50 feet above the suburbs, southwest of Baghdad, they came under intense attack from all sides, from small arms, anti-aircraft guns and RPGs, going both in and coming back out again. Every Apache took lots of hits, but none were lost, even though some were badly damaged and one crew was badly injured. In Iraq, from 2003 to 2009, 15 Apaches were lost to hostile fire, and that included four which were destroyed on the ground by enemy mortar fire, which proved they were very tough, considering they were in the heat of the action and a primary target. There have been five major revisions of the Apache since launch, the AH-64A, B, C, D and the E, V6 being the latest. Of these, the AH-64D in 2003 saw the introduction of the AN-APG-78 Longbow Fire Control Radar, which is the large donut shaped object above the blades. In this elevated position, it allows the helicopter to hover just above the brow of a hill or tree line and let the millimeter radar scan horizon without exposing the helicopter. The original could identify 128 targets and then prioritize the 16 most important within 30 seconds. It could also transmit this location data to ground-based artillery and other Apaches for coordinated attacks. The abilities of the latest Apache V6 AH-64E Guardian have increased dramatically as advances in digital electronics have also increased. The main updates here allow for new Apache Guardians to be part of a modern digital battlefield. This ties the Apache into a common network where data can be shared between planes like the F-35, tanks, fighting vehicles, artillery, convoy and support vehicles and even down to troops on the ground directly with their riflemen radios. Commanders can see what each helicopter, plane and vehicle can see and share that information with any of the others and also letting them know where everybody is relative to the enemy and friendly forces. As part of the upgrade, the Longbow radar can now identify 256 targets instead of 128 at up to twice the distance as before, as well as a new 360 degree surveillance mode. It also has a maritime mode which allows Navy versions to engage small maritime targets such as fast attack boats and landing vessels. The V6 Guardian can control drones and UAVs and with the new internal colour displays to replace the old green monochrome ones and linked to the new Lockheed Martin target acquisition designation Sight Pilot Night Vision System means that they can see farther than the weapons have range. Allowing the Apache V6 pilots to detect and recognise and engage targets from greater distances and in low visibility like fog, dust storms and also at night. And this is where the effectiveness of the Apache really has the advantage over foreign rivals, even if they may have individually better armour or protection. The new digital connectivity with the rest of the digital battlefield gives them a situational awareness far greater than their adversaries. 
not only knowing where all of their own forces are, but knowing more about where the enemy is than the enemy knows themselves. There are also far more Apaches, over 2,400, compared to their Russian or Chinese equivalents, which could be counted in hundreds. And there are many more countries around the world which have them. The Apache looks likely to carry on in service well into the 2030s and beyond, until the future vertical lift project produces its ultimate successor. The application of advanced technology has kept what is a 40-year-old design at the top of a tree and above the competition, and until its adversaries adopt a similar digital battlefield, it looks like the Apache will stay at the top. Now, whilst we're talking about keeping on top, if you run a business, a blog, or are looking to set up an online presence, you want a top quality provider, and Squarespace can give you more for your money with more resources and tools to help you get the job done. With Squarespace, you can quickly have a beautiful looking website to grow your business or online presence. You can create and grow a community and use their powerful included blogging tools to categorize, schedule and share posts and build interaction with their fully integrated commenting system. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content, manage your members, send email communications and connect with your social media accounts to push your website content to them and spread the word via your followers all in one easy to use platform. If you have an online store, they have new third party tools to manage inventory, promote products, track sales and handle tax and shipping around the world. All you need to do to get started is to go to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash curious droid to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain.